Iniciamos una nueva cobertura de Futurecom este año, en el año 2016. Nos visita la empresa Amdocs, Jesús y Renato, con quien vamos a estar hablando de la experiencia digital y de cómo los operadores deben empezar a entender bien esta experiencia digital para satisfacer a los usuarios. Vamos a hacer la entrevista en inglés, así que déjenme cambiar a este idioma para poder entrevistar a nuestros invitados. Uh, Renato, Jesús, welcome to Telesemana.com for you. this Thank coverage you. of Futurecom 2016. So, uh, I have a few questions for you based on your recent announcements uh, in the market, not just here at Futurecom. So, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that some of the things that you announced recently are also being discussed here. And the first thing I want you to comment is on the three acquisitions that you made, a companies called Vindicia, Britaville and Pontis. To tell me what they mean for your portfolio and why those companies were acquired. Yeah, so, our digital strategy includes uh, our existing capabilities and functionalities like uh, customer experience systems and uh, business analytics. And these companies and their solutions complement our portfolio. So for example, Vindicia is a software as a service, uh, subscription management uh, and payment solution uh, that we can offer for uh, sus uh, service providers that can offer digital services over, over the top services. Um, Bright Bill, Uh, with the design-led expertise they have on the solution, help us enable the service provider to convert the customer bill into a very unique uh, and rich engagement uh, channel. And, uh, and finally, uh, Pontis is a digital contextual engagement solution that allow us to, uh, with analytics and with uh, online learning, uh, engage and, and in the context of the subscriber in particular in the moment that they, he is or she is uh, in the journey with the service provider. Okay, you want to add something, Renato, no? No. All right, <laughs> you're fine no. with that. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing that these three companies are being mm -hmm. added to your portfolio to make sure you are advancing on how you offer the digital experience for the users. Exactly. So tell exactly. us what you are doing in that area of digital experience. What does it mean and, and what are you doing? Well, I think that what it means depends on which customer and which person you're talking to. Uh, there are a few things that are very common. Everybody wants to enrich the experience of the customer, make it more self-service. They want to make it complete. And more than that, connected, regardless which channel are you using to do the, to do the interaction with the companies. So based on these things, some things, as I said, are common. However, certain things are very unique. For example, certain companies are doing a lot of investments to make sure that their store experience is very unique and what we call it digital. Mm -hmm. By the other hand, another operators are simply say, we're not going to have stores anymore. We are going to have only the online channel. Okay. But what we see that is important is that each one of the customers are looking for a unique solution to please their customers. Okay, that sounds like a difficult task. All right, so there's something interesting going on. You are also mm. launching one thing called the enhanced video experience for Google uh, based on the data plan API for YouTube. And that's mm -hmm. something for the operators. And obviously YouTube and Google are OTTs. And sometimes we see the, see the OTTs and operators are kind of battling each other a little bit. Uh, tell us why, and you are not the only ones offering this kind of uh, integration with uh, mm -hmm. YouTube and, and Google, with this API. Why mm -hmm. is this so important? Why suddenly you guys are trying to marry operators with uh, OTTs? Well, I mean, the, the operators are embracing the phenomenon of the OTT and in a way to also monetize uh, the OTT service uh, throughout their network. The integration with the Google API, sorry, with the Google to YouTube API, what allows also the operator is, is to maximize the investment they have in the network because with this particular service, uh, the subscriber can see the videos offline and as long as they agree to see it in an off-peak period, mm -hmm. they can get a better rate from the data point of view from the operator. So it helps the, the operator maximize their investment in the network and the subscriber to have a more competitive and affordable service. Google and the operator don't have to talk to each other. I mean, with this API, you guys are able to connect. Yeah, it's, to a, it's a standard API. Okay. Right. So and this is what we, what we just made a comment about. Each operator or each customer is going to Uh, how can I say, decide the best way to handle this new digital world. I think that this is one of the options that they have. It's not only the only one, mm -hmm. right. but uh, a lot of them, as you can see, they're experimenting this cooperation. Okay, now, are there other services on the video arena, Netflix or any other 
services that in the future you might also have this such, such things as, as this API mm -hmm. and then integrate in the same manner you're doing with the Google or YouTube API. Absolutely, I mean, that's what the, the intent is. Of course, it's going to require some collaboration with the OTTs, but definitely that this is one of the first one, but we envision that it will be more of them. The reason you are using Google is because Google is more open in terms of the APIs mm -hmm. than other uh, OTT services? Correct, at this, at this point. Okay. So let's jump to the Andox Optima, which is another product that you have. Mm -hmm. And actually, recently, an operator called Seaborn Networks, uh, which mm -hmm. is building a submarine cable within uh, the US and Brazil, mm -hmm. is using Optima. For some reason, I thought Optima was more for mobile operators or fixed operators, and suddenly mm -hmm. a cable operator is using it. Tell us about Optima and why the Seaborn Cable Company is actually using it. Okay, Network. so Optima is actually a new product that uh, MDOX just launched. Uh, Seaborn is our first customer, as you said. And the thing that it's important to see is that it's a solution built for a small, medium uh, operator. So it can be a wireless operator, can be a wireline operator, or a multiplayer operator. Actually, uh, Optima is designed to be uh, a solution that can do things in real time, in batch, in the customer care, in the self-service. It's a complete solution for these kind of operators. That's why they're using that. Not only for operators in the actual let's say usual telco world, mm -hmm. but also for non-telco companies. Uh, companies that use a lot of uh, transactions, okay. they have millions of transactions like per banks? day. Oh. Uh, banks, insurance companies, uh, healthcare companies. So these are kind of uh, operations where they need a lot of uh, flexibility in the sense of how they are going to monetize each transaction, but they also need to have a lot of, uh, let's say, technology that allows them to process millions of transactions per day, okay. which is exactly what Optima does. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. let's go to uh, another hot topic, which is AT&T is developing the open source Ecom platform mm -hmm. uh, to go to SDN and NFB. And you recently announced that you are going to help operators integrate Ecom within their networks if mm -hmm. they want to use that open source platform uh, you know, yes. to speed up their transformation in terms of their network architecture. Mm -hmm. Tell us what does it mean, what does that mean, and what do you expect from that um, announcement in terms of operators well, actually trying to integrate Ecom? Well, Ecom, uh, in our opinion, is a is a big step forward for the industry for two reasons. It's an open source, but it not only it's an open source, but it covers the entire uh, spectrum of the services related to NFV. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, what we have seen is a lot of. Uh, proprietary platforms, a lot of, uh, you know, punctual solutions for each part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And right now, at and is step in to do that. So we are very proud to be in the position to help other operators also to embrace uh, the same idea and the same concept, which the industry in general needs to, to make sure that we deploy the products uh, on time and with a very low budget. But more than that is that we improve the time to market of all these uh, offerings. Okay, now when it comes to SDN and NFB, we have Ecom, but we also have Telefonica with the Open Mano project, mm -hmm. and we have other operators in Asia also developing their own NFB SDN framework, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then also we have Etsy, which actually gave yes. the framework. So it seems like, I don't know, from, from a journalistic point of view, it seems like there is some fragmentation here. Some people are just shooting in different directions. I think that what you are seeing is the beginning. Okay. If you think, uh, well, when we start to talk about NFV as the end, just a few years ago, and only right now, customers are really implementing that and really facing the real issues. So I think that for a while, you're going to see, I'm not so sure if it's the word is fragmentation, but pretty sure you're going to see a lot of options okay. until you get, uh, you know, settled down in a certain number of solutions and principles. All right. Final question. A couple of months ago, you did a survey, interesting one, mm -hmm. uh, about how the operators need to adapt to the new teenagers or the teenagers mm -hmm. today, because they are going to be the paying uh, customers of the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit the conclusions on those on those results, because it mm -hmm. seems like it's, it's even you know for us probably it's very hard to understand teenagers these days. Uh, <laughs> they are much different. They have a lot of tools we didn't have when we were teenagers. Yes, for sure. So you know, if we are running, not myself, but. Mm -hmm. The operators, uh, the executives are of my age or mm -hmm. or older. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very tough to understand teenagers. So yeah. just tell us what you what you learned from from that survey. Well, you know, in, mm -hmm. it's interesting because just to refresh a couple of data points from that survey, um, teenagers, about forty two percent of them, 
prefer the social media to engage with the service provider. And about 42% of them expect a response within an hour. Okay. Um, you see what I mean? About 60% oh, of them, crazy. about 60% of them already engage a service provider via social media for customer service uh, purposes. And if you look at uh, Brazil, for example, out of the 120 million internet users, 103 million are social media users. So this is a phenomenon that is already in front of us. And the operators need to embrace that, that challenge. Um, what we are trying to do with our digital strategy is to en en enable them, the operators, to attend this segment um, that is, as you said, the customers of the future. And if you see today, it's, it's a significant challenge because when we, saw, when we did the survey, some of them recognize some of the OTT services like Google, WhatsApp, and others as a better brand for service, uh, as a service provider than the operators itself. So it's a big challenge that they need to overcome in, in one hand, partnering with the OTTs, but also enhancing their digital strategy and transformation to serve this segment. Renato Jesus, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I'm to going to invite us. everybody to visit your webpage because I actually some of these questions came from from your webpage. So if they want to, uh, okay, deep digger. Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.